today we are going to talk about uh, painful periods and uh, a very important topic which is called as endometriosis uh, why uh, we have chosen this topic because there is a lot of uh, delay in diagnosis and a lot of mismanagement which needs to be addressed uh, in endometriosis care for women so uh, i would like to disclose that i am one of the faculties for metrocity and their fellowship program dysmenorrhea pain associated with menstruation is called dysmenorrhea i think that attendees are all doctors and uh, all of them have studied about dysmenorrhea and even endometriosis but when you come to practice the change of management and uh, clinical implications of uh, endometriosis are different what we are taught in medical school is absolutely different but what we are practicing as a excision surgeon it is absolutely different so i am going to take you through the current management of endometriosis more than half of women who menstruate have some pain for one to two days each month usually the pain is mild but for some women the pain is so severe that it keeps them from doing their normal activities for several days a month now there are two types of dysmenorrhea primary and secondary the primary dysmenorrhea means there is no cause it happens mild cramps happens because of the release of prostaglandins and all of us know the cramps which do not hamper your routine activities or they subside with simple analgesics they are absolutely fine and that is that comes under the category of primary dysmenorrhea now secondary dysmenorrhea means there is a cause for it that can be endometriosis adenomyosis fibroids pelvic inflammatory disease adhesions problems with the uterus fallopian tubes and other reproductive organs crohn's disease or urinary diseases as well now when a patient can identify that their cramps are not normal the cramps interfering with daily routine activities like a school girl missing her school a office going girl missing her office and the housewife taking bed rest not able to do her routine chores the definitely that's not normal over the counter drug painkillers are not helping you pelvic discomfort cramp lasting for more than 2 to 3 days and cramps feel different uh, believe me the patients who come to us with endometriosis pain some of the patients are there they can't even walk and they describe their pain in different uh, they do compare it with the different uh, things like somebody is stabbing them from inside somebody is uh, tearing them apart the organs are tearing apart such kind of pain to describe now endometriosis affects 1 in 10 women we always say if you know 10 women with endometriosis you will understand endometriosis it's such a related disease 200 million worldwide women are suffering average delay in diagnosis is 7 to 10 years handful of excision surgeons are available globally what is endometriosis endometriosis basically is a condition where the tissue similar to the lining of the uterus gets implanted outside the most common location of implantation is ovaries but it can grow in any part of the body from head to toe so that is also called as extra pelvic endometriosis the pelvic endometriosis is the commonest one and the second commonest is the bowel endometriosis and then comes the urinary tract endometriosis so what are the major hurdles when we uh, talk about endometriosis care there is a standard of care lack of standard of care we don't have set protocols and as one size does not fit all we cannot just generalize the treatment gas lighting by medical fraternity and peers patients are often told that your pain is normal it's all in your head and you are just making it up even young girls when they miss their school sometimes they are told that because you don't want to go to school you are making it up so all these things come under the uh, phenomena called as gaslighting which is very prevalent in medical community as well lack of familial support even if they don't get the family support delay in diagnosis endometriosis is not a sub specialty in medical school yet and lack of excision is specialist globally now endometriosis the first treatment should be the best one excision means completely removing the lesions from wherever they are it may be on the bowel or the bladder or ureter or any other maybe diaphragm or lungs as well so what are the barriers the international organizations they still do not recognize endometriosis uh, as a very important disease which needs attention gynecology organizations they are not paying attention to its management and streamlining its management uh, and they should uh, stress upon more teaching on endometriosis excision surgery they should stress upon more 
having the subspecialty clinics for this, which is not happening. Excision surgeons, lack of excision surgeons, lack of multidisciplinary teams, medical school teaching needs a transformational change. Now, endometriosis is taught in medical schools with primary treatment being uh, medical treatment, but it does not work. It is not taught in medical schools. So when you come out of the medical schools and start practicing, how can we expect you to take care of these patients who are suffering for years together? So teaching in medical schools needs a transformational change. The patient-centered causes, patients don't want to talk about it. They feel embarrassed. Period is always a hush-hush phenomenon. We don't want to talk about it. Tolerance. When patient is told that your pain is, you're just making it up, she starts tolerating it. And everybody has a different threshold. So, uh, and especially women, when it comes to pain or when it comes to periods, they don't want to talk about it or they don't want to uh, reveal their pain in front of others. Stigmatization, anything related to periods has a big stigma attached to it. Uncertainty of normal versus abnormal symptoms. Patients are not aware what is normal and abnormal. Patients are often told, I think many of the doctor's families also, sometimes they are told, the mothers and grandmothers keep telling their children that pain is normal. We also had pain. If you are having what, how it is different. Now, physician causes, the medical school teaching I already mentioned, normalization of symptoms. We should stop telling patients that this is normal. If we normalize it, what can they expect from others? If a doctor has told, I have patients who come to me and they uh, tell me that they have gone to seven, eight gynecologists and nobody detected their endometriosis. And everyone told them that pain during periods is normal. So if a doctor tells them that it is normal, they are going to believe it. So this should not happen. If a patient is saying there is pain, we should be a little more aggressive in helping them to diagnose it. Misdiagnosis, because there is a lack of, uh, there, is, uh, there is a lot of uh, misdiagnosis by, because these patients are diagnosed with uh, IBS and uh, other diseases uh, when they cannot find endometriosis on scans. Gaslighting, reliance on inadequate diagnostic tests, all endometriosis cannot be picked up on imaging if the person doing the imaging is not trained. Reluctance to advise surgery, many of the gynecologists do not advise surgery I don't know what is the reluctance, why they don't advise surgery, because uh, they, patients often tell us that uh, they are told that uh, surgery is very uh, difficult. Uh, this surgery can uh, lower your chances of getting pregnant. Why we don't look at their quality of life? Our aim is to improve the quality of life of patient. If the patient is looking for pregnancy, definitely my surgery should uh, enhance her fertility rate or spontaneous conception rates. If patient is looking for pain relief, pain during intercourse, pain during defecation, pain during urination, my aim is to give her relief from that pain. Now, heavily dependent on medical therapy. Medical therapy is pharma-driven. Most of these medicines might alleviate their symptoms, but it does not remove the disease. Clinical guidelines do not provide any consistent approach. Misdiagnosis, two-third of women are misdiagnosed. Half of them have already met five to six doctors. They are told that you have a psychological issues, you have IBS, you have anxiety, stress, depression. Most of these patients are also diagnosed as only PCOS, fatigue. Now, why they are diagnosed mostly with PCOS, they come with a pain and endometriomas are not found, the cysts are not found. And if the person is not trained to look for deep infiltrative endometriosis, they're going to miss it. And ovaries will appear PCO for most of the patients because antel follicle count may be more because of her weight or her lifestyle. So most of these patients are diagnosed with PCOS as well. Patients sometimes describe taking a grand tour of a specialist. They go to general physician, they go to gynecologist, endocrinologist, rheumatologist, neurophysician, orthopedician, gastroenterologist, because they have multiple symptoms. The symptoms of endometriosis are not only confined to period pain. They may have urinary symptoms, bowel symptoms. Some patients have only fatigue, nothing else. Now, gaslighting. Gaslighting means manipulating someone by psychological means into doubting their own sanity. A patient is telling that I have pain and we are telling them, no, it's not there. Pain is not there. And it's all in your head and you're just overreacting. You're sensitive. So we are making them 
believe that maybe they are wrong somewhere. If you imagine a young girl of 14 to 16 years who says to her mother or to her teachers that she has pain during periods. So, and she's told repeatedly that pain is normal. Your all friends have it. I had it. Your grandmother had it. So after a certain period of time, her psychological thinking will be, it is her who is not able to handle her pain. So there is a problem with her. So it affects their uh, growth, their development, and a huge psychological impact on their upbringing as well. So we have to stop saying or normalizing the symptoms and we should start believing what the patient or a person is telling us. Now, gaslighting sounds like if the patients are told, uh, why are you so defensive? There you go again, you're overreacting, you need help, you are so thin-skinned, you're making it up. So all these things are told. 